Mike, thank you. More concerns tonight over whether the federal government is headed for a bailout of the health insurance industry because of Obamacare misfires. Chief National Correspondent Jim Angle with a look at what was supposed to be the crowning achievement of this administration and what, at this point, was supposed to be a victory lap about the president's health care plan. In this, his fifth State of the Union speech. Republicans expect the president to tout his signature issue tonight, Obamacare, so they took some shots in advance, starting with early assurances that healthcare.gov was secure when it opened for enrollment. They were lying about the vulnerabilities on the day they went live on October 1st, and that they are still lying. I don't use the word lie without real forethought. Another argument has been raging for months about whether Obamacare is helping or hurting patients. The cost of premiums plus deductibles before anyone gets a penny of benefits was on display today at a news conference with Republican guests for the State of the Union, including Diane Iser, a breast cancer survivor whose policy was canceled and forced into Obamacare. My deductible will increase 300 percent. My premium will increase 50 percent. Aaron Hirsch is a self-employed contractor who had a policy in the individual market for his family. It's going to cost me 80 percent more in premiums, which works out to about $5,500 more a year uh, in premiums that I will have to pay for services that I don't really need. And a leukemia patient who also had her policy canceled. So I ended up enrolling in a private plan um, where I can at least get my chemotherapy but, of course, I'm paying a higher price now as far as out-of-pocket costs. Yet another issue has Republicans riled up. If enough young people don't sign up, and they haven't yet, then the insurance companies could lose money and, under Obamacare, get bailed out by the government. You could have a systemic, industry-wide failure. And in that case, uh, the risk corridor seems to be the place that the president would go uh, to bail those, those companies out. Griffin joined Senator Marco Rubio in challenging the bailout, which is more likely because the president kept making changes in the law and in the deadlines, which brought complaints like this from insurance companies. You're making unilateral changes for political reasons. We understand that, but you're making it really difficult on us because we've built our entire business model, our pricing on what we thought the law was going to be. Now, Senate Republicans offered a new health care alternative Monday, which was roundly criticized by Democrats. And who knows, the president might even take a shot at that tonight. Brett. All right, Jim, thank you.